Recently we got a ton of new info on Rising Storm 2 from the developers panel at PAX. The panel itself was quite long, so I want to sum up some of the exciting new things we learned about. Right at the start they made sure to reiterate that they are putting a ton of focus on refining the series core strengths. Being authentic, immersive, asymmetric, historically accurate. Not a mill sim or necessarily even realistic. Since this is their first game outside of World War II, we are going to see a lot of new technology that was available at the time, which should shake things up quite a fair bit. To begin with, they completely redesigned the squad system. Instead of going for an approach that mirrored how squads in the reality of World War II were set up, which they admitted didn't work out too well in the gameplay department, they are going for a more modern, user-friendly way of doing things. People will be able to create, name and even lock squads as they please. The squad leader will be able to freely choose their loadout. This should make gameplay more coherent overall. Stop clueless players from hogging the squad leader position just to get a superior loadout and especially make it easier to play and coordinate with your friends. See, whenever I tried to play with friends in Red Orchestra True or Rising Storm, we only ever managed to get brief moments of team play going amidst the confusion of both the battle and the squad system. For the most part it just felt like we were in the same battle for sure, but not necessarily fighting together. How much of an impact the squad system can have on the experience is easily underestimated considering the excitement about all the new guns and game modes we will get to play with, but I really have high hopes for this aspect of the game. New game modes you say? Yeah, new game modes. Classic territory will still be available. Frontline based combat, 64 players, very intense. Fitting with the Vietnam theme though, they are also trying out a potentially more theme appropriate game mode. Supremacy. Ditching classic frontline style combat, this will feature more free flow engagements. A bit like Conquest in classic battlefield titles, you will be able to choose which objectives to attack in a tactical way and not just progressively work your way throughout the map. The devs claim it won't be chaotic still, but feel very cohesive with the theme, as engagements tended to happen rapidly and unpredictably in Vietnam, as opposed to more traditional battles in World War 1 or 2. They also briefly mentioned a new game mode called Skirmish, which will be based on having smaller teams duke it out, basically squad combat. So no big 64 players battles in this mode, and the maps are presumably going to be a fair bit smaller too. Honestly I was really surprised at them taking a stab at this kind of gameplay, since Red Orchestra and Rising Storm alike have always been known for all out big 64 player battles. To their credit, squad combat was very common in Vietnam. Instead of moving around in big divisions, the jungle setting and guerrilla nature of the enemy's tactics often led to just a handful of squads operating on their own. Even still, I'm not sure how well this type of gameplay will gel with what we expect from a Rising Storm game and it might just come off as boring compared to the big 64 player battles. While I'm very excited about the aforementioned non-linear supremacy mode, I'm not completely sold on the squad's base skirmish yet. Just as before, the devs are trying to keep the involved forces authentic to the battles and the maps they are based on. So on some maps the US will feature the US army, while on others it might be the marines instead. The North Vietnam faction might be the rebel Viet Cong in one battle, and the proper North Vietnamese Army or NVA in others. And from what they say it won't just be jungle scenarios either, which is probably what most people think of when they hear Vietnam. There will be urban maps such as cities and villages just as there will be jungles and rice farms, military bases or outposts. To me what's especially great to hear is that they will also double down on their mod support. They specifically said that the community is highly encouraged to make new maps and it's safe to assume that the best custom maps will be added to the main game eventually, just like in Rising Storm. While the default maps in that game were really strong already, some of the community maps brought whole new aspects to the game and I enjoyed some of my most engaging battles on them. Really glad to hear this. So when can we finally get our hands on this? They are going for a release in the first quarter of 2017. They previously stated that they want to avoid a Red Orchestra 2 situation at any cost, which basically boiled down to them releasing the game way too early, putting a lot of old school fans and new players off. Since I'm incredibly hyped about the game, I obviously hope that they can stick to their plan and release the game early 2017. But honestly I'm kind of expecting them to delay it a bit and release it in maybe May or June of that year. It's just a gut feeling.
Either way, we will hopefully be able to play it long before that already. Beta signups are already available, link in the description, and it will be rolled out in phases. More and more people will soon get access to it and I can't wait to be able to experience it myself and upload my own gameplay videos and guides for it.